you're welcome to seminar week this uh, week we are going to be we're going to be sharing regarding divine connections divine connections divine connections it is not let's read the verse let's read let's read the we're going to read some verses then we'll start talking from there um I'm hoping that I can I can help us to sharpen something this way. See Ephesians chapter two verse ten. I have this from I think the NIV, uh, but I'll take it from any version you bring it. For we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do let me see um glory got that from niv okay that's fine we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god has prepared in advance for us to do so i need you to look at that word prepared and the word in advance for us to do mm -hmm. and uh, if you know how to pin something you pin that one there when we used the paper bibles you put a finger there now i want you to go back 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 to psalm 139 and verse 16. Don't worry, you don't have to go too much back or put a finger on this one because you have a digital Bible. So I assume that you're just going to scroll chap, 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 to Psalm 139, verse 16. It says, Your eyes saw my informed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Hey, the eyes of the Lord saw my body before it was formed. It also saw all the days ordained for me. All the days ordained. Ordained means pre-planned. Ordained means set up before time, beforehand. All right? means set up and separated for me and all those days were written in god's book before any one of them came to be hey hey ha. praise the lord let's go to another third verse he to timothy 1 9 to timothy 1 9 I'm going to get a lot of verses, but don't worry, you're going to come back to each one of them slowly. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 9. He has, he meaning Jesus, has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace now if you know how to underline or highlight highlight his own purpose and grace this grace which was history which was given to us in christ jesus before the beginning of time a that that last part before the beginning given to us before the beginning of time i want you to, to also mark it if you are writing something write it down so there are things you need to mark in those verses in ephesians god prepared us in advance for the works which god prepared us prepared in advance for us to do that's a very important one mark it hmm in Psalm 139, verse 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Hmm? Take that 
broken down in 2 Timothy 1 9 this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time before creation before anything was before Adam and Eve this grace was given to us before the beginning of time before they started counting years this grace was given to us and lastly Psalm 139, uh, 15 and 16, it says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book, again, in your book, we are all written the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them verse 17 says how precious also are your thoughts towards me oh god how vast is the sum of them all father in the name of jesus i thank you for your word and i pray for illumination of your word i pray that you will open the eyes of our understanding as we share from these scriptures our lives will be brought out of their hiding places and be manifest for the purpose which you have already ordained in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah friends Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says that we are God's own handiwork. What does that mean? It means that we are God's personal craft. God did not delegate our formation. We are God's personal craft. We are God's own masterpieces. Uh, masterpieces we are a piece of artwork each one of us a piece of artwork if you know anything about art you've heard about the most popular and most expensive piece of art called the mona lisa the mona lisa has nothing on me and nothing on you you have been created by god by his own manipulation of his own fingers and intellect and artistry god himself has 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 taken you and crafted you hmm? Hmm? we have been specially woven with with with, with hands as if we, we were the, we were being woven by the hands of a skillful wheel you know there is no copy of me anywhere on earth anywhere not only on earth but in the entire universe you could go to the moon you could go to mars you could go to pluto jupiter you could not find another me or another you you are carefully intentionally crafted having been specially woven stitched up by the hands of a skilled craftsman in such a special way in order to do god's work in order for you to do work special occasion there's a friend of ours we listen to my wife and i who says it's special 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 occasion you are a special work of god special work for special occasion and you know what to do good works you all this effort all this skill all this weaving all this architecture all this designing all this you know made to fit fit for purpose is made so that you can do good works as if you're reserved for special occasions you know those of you who are young you don't know maybe you do but those 
of us who are from Generation X, from those those days, even before Generation X, some of us, there were cups in the house for daily use. Everybody can use, and there were cups for special occasions, probably in a drawer somewhere, locked away. Anybody relates what I'm talking about? When the special guests came, the special glasses came out. Those glasses, they did not play. Those glasses, you did not break those. Well, if you did, you would get some breakage of your own someplace, someplace behind you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people are reading me loud and clear. You are specially made for a special occasion and a special function in God's special season. And to do works which have been prepared in advance for us to do. It is not like you are just sitting there and when the work shows up, then you will be now repurposed for the work. <laughs> Someone sat and saw the work that you are supposed to do, the function you're supposed to have, the function I'm supposed to have, and then he went and made you to fit the purpose and the work that you're supposed to. You are made for purpose. You are not, you're not made in order to fit in whatever circumstance should arise. That's not how we are made. That is why the Bible says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were, I appointed you as a prophet. God has foreseen. God has foreknown me. He has foreknown you. He has foreknown us. God foreknew upper room churches before they were an idea. You ask Apostle Timothy, he will tell you a story. God for a new upper room church campana before I was born. Before I was born, many years ago, many decades ago. God for a new. The work that needs to be done in 2024, before I ever arrived in this year. And, and, and. And then after knowing what work needs to be done, then he went and created the people to do the work. God knew the work that is needed in this country, in Uganda, in this season. And God went and created the people to do the work. He went and formed the people to do the work and didn't just form them but he made them in such a way that each one fits in a slot somewhere so that the work can be done the work was preordained then he made people to do the work the verses we have have read they tell a story they tell a story they tell a story He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done. No. It's not that we have impressed him. No. But because of his own purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ before the beginning of time. Sometimes I make the mistake also of praying, give me grace to do this. But this grace was given before the beginning of time. Somebody already knew, already measured that it is impossible for me to do what I'm supposed to do, to be what I'm supposed to be. And he has put in advance, in advance, God has already deposited an advance of grace, an advance of the things I need to become, to 
become the person that I need to become. Now, therefore, if I should remind you that phrase, therefore, therefore. I want to say to you that nothing in this world as you know it, nothing is random. Nothing is random. Robert Brown, who is a scientist, physicist, in 1827, said that, that, that the, he wrote what he called a, a, a law. I don't know what it was, those physics things. Those of you who do physics, you know. You know? Uh, that the erratic random movement of microscope microscopic particles in a fluid as a result of continuous bombardment surrounding them from molecules surrounding the medium is called the, the law of what? Fluidity, something like that. There was something about fluidity and random movement. Fluid motion. Uh, you know that you know some random particle moving about bumping into each other. No, we are not random particles moving. Maybe what Robert Brown said was correct for fluids. But you're not a fluid. Sometimes we are not a fluid. Sometimes we assume that just because someone wrote a certain law hundreds of years ago and then died after that, that that is how we are. It's a lie. I am not here to randomly bump into people and as randomly as I bumped into them, then I randomly bump away from them and then bump into another person. It, it is nothing, there's, there's nothing random about you. There is nothing random about you. There is nothing random about you. Nothing is random. No singular person is in my orbit, in my circle, by accident. No. No, no, no. No singular person I have met is in my path by some random chance. No, 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 no. Remember, everything has been ordained for me before one of them happened. Every single day has been ordained, has been planned out, choreographed before it happens. You're not a random, in a random fluid motion. You're not continuously bombarding each other hmm? and uh, uh, like, dump, bump, you know, knocking here and then knocking there. No, no. Rather, 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 you are carefully planned product made to fit a particular purpose which purpose has already been ordained before time in other words i am sorry to inform you that i am not a product of mass production mass production is what toyota does they go on their robotic machines the, the metal plates are cut by a robot, the screws are bolted by a robot, and every every 20 minutes they're releasing, 20-15 minutes they're releasing a whole new car. Ah, ah, robots making noise. And then the cars are identical. They're identical. All Corollas are Corollas. All RAV4 are RAV4. All Land Cruiser are Land Cruiser. They are the same. So you can line them up and there's not a single difference between each one of them. We are not mass production products. We are carefully and fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us to fit a purpose. I am not mass produced. You are not mass produced. You didn't just drop down here. And let me tell you, the kingdom of is a kingdom of numbers. I keep telling my friends in Kampala. That's why there's a whole chapter in the Bible, a whole book in the Bible labeled numbers. Because I happen accidentally. Something God is, is 
skin is carefully measured, cubits and feet and inches and everything is numbered in God's kingdom. Even actually at the end of the world, they are going to be counting numbers and separating the sheep from the God. There's going to be a proper countation. Hey, it's a count of numbers. So now, if, if that's how the kingdom of God is, let me ask you a question. There are 8 billion people on earth. All of them different. All of them different DNA. All of them different fingerprints. What are the chances that of the 8 billion people you are meeting, the very people that you are meeting, what are the chances that you are interacting with? with the people you enter. What are the chances you're going to school with the people you're going to school? What are the chances that you you went to school with the people you went to school with? It's not an accident. Each one of them preordained to do God's work. I know some of them God's work for you were to put whips on your bums as you were not listening properly. But they were doing God's work to follow you, to bring you to where you are. Some of them, God's work in their lives were to Teach you the art of patience, the art of recovering from disappointment. You took a heartbreak, but you survived it. Hey, God's work was happening in your life through them. You may curse, you may hate, you may detest, but the God's work, it is not an accident. Every person you're meeting in your life has a purpose. Then you're going to think about people different. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, hey. There are 46 million people in Uganda, plus about 2 million refugees and a certain other number alone of, of people who are just going through, like travelers and what have you. What are the chances that of the 46 million, these are the ones you're meeting? It's not an accident. It's not because you're limited of space. It's not because you couldn't meet another person. Some of you, is the, your interactions are exponentially multiplied by your interactions on, on social media. You, you, you have now become like, God help you. Too much. What are the chances? It's not an accident. Every interaction, every court, you, every, every, everything is ordained before time. In this country, about 24 million of us are females. What are the chances that the one you're interacting with? It's not an accident. It has to be some choreography somewhere. Your life is like an orchestra. It is like a large choir with everybody singing their part with every part fitting where it should. And maybe it's not perfect. And maybe it, it, it is not, the, the tunes are not coming out yet. But when the work is finished, it will be quite musical. It will be quite musical. So do not wash the baby and throw the baby away with the water with which you wash the baby because you don't understand everything. Just this week, I want us to walk away with a, com a complete conviction that we are not random. We are not just random. We, the people that God, that God has put in our orbit are not there randomly. The people that I have to pastor at Kampala, they are not random. Amen. The people that I, I will meet on this seminar, they are not random. You are not just here. The, 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 the people you interact with, they are not random. God has already created a special web in which you operate, including all the people that you are supposed to meet. Including, God has already preordained your connection here on earth. Once you know that, you stop stressing. You stop feeling like you have a disadvantage. You start knowing that for the sake of the work that God has called you to do, which you will do, he has already built in the right connections for you to do the work that you've already been ordained to do. You are not randomly falling into things. You are not think that they fell into things. Which things? <laughs> which things? Your substance.
existence was known before you were created. Before you know. I hope that we can digest this week, this whole substance, and see how these connections are created, how to form them, how to build them, how to harness them, how to accelerate, how to, in the name of Jesus.